Okay, so to know about submitting claims in the grand gateway, there's a couple of things we want you to be prepared with. And I'm going to go into details in some of these. But certainly you need to be familiar with the requirements and details of your contract. So, you know, the group we have here, this is a, a you know, captive audience. Your contracts are all very similar. Uh, so you have similar terms and conditions for your contracts. But you should certainly read them and understand, of course, what is required of you. Um, Department of Health has put in the grantee document folder in your grants gateway in your contract, uh, the state claims preparation and submission requirements, and the state claims required supporting documents. So you can find those documents in your grantee document folder. And uh, you know what, I'll look at that when I get into the system as well. If you have any questions, talk to your program or contract manager. They can help you along the way. Uh, we do want you to have your documents ready prior to logging into the gateway, just it makes it easier instead of having to log in and then realize you don't have what you need and then have to come back again. Um, just to be organized, before you get started, you should have your documents ready. And I'll tell you about those documents in a few more slides. We want you to be aware of what categories your claims will fall under. So if you have an expenditure budget, there's several different categories that uh, you could have claims for. So make sure if you know you have, you know, let's say $5,000 for contractual, um, that you know that it goes in contractual, and then you have the supporting documentation for that, and you may have another, you know, $1,000 in travel. So understand what categories those claims will be going under. If you have multiple items to claim, make sure you know how much your claim should add up to. So we want you to know in your head or, you know, in preparation before you get into the gateway, let's say your claim, you know your claims are going to add up to uh, $15,000. So once you do it in the gateway, that should all obviously add up to $15,000. So just a little double check to make sure you know what your final amount will be. And then ensure that you have the right role to submit your claim. We're going to get into that in a few minutes, uh, but it is important and uh, we've already seen people uh, having confusion on that, so I want to get uh, explain that a little better. Okay, so I said, remember before I said, uh, know the details of your contract. So first of all, one of the questions you might have, is there an advance allowed? And for these contracts that we're talking about in particular, advances are not allowed. But if you wanted to know that in your contract, you might have other contracts for the state, or, and some of them may have advances, uh, may have allowed advances. Uh, if you look in your contract, you'll see in Section 3B of the state terms and conditions, it talks about it. It also talks about it in the Attachment D, Section 1A of Attachment D of your contract, that tells you specifically about your advance if, if you have one. The way these contracts read is if the section isn't filled out, it doesn't apply to you. So you'll see that in your Section 1A of Attachment D for your contracts because you do not get an advance for these types of contracts. You also should know in your contract how often are claims allowed or required. So sometimes they're quarterly, sometimes they're monthly. In this case, these contracts are monthly and they're due within 30 days of the claim period. So again, that's something you could find in your contract in Section 1B of Attachment D. And certainly you can talk to your program manager or contract manager for details on that as well. All right, you should also know about program expectations. What do they expect you to submit with your claims? Now, the process of submitting your claims has changed, but what you need to provide us or what you need to provide the program has not changed. So what you've been providing all along, if you've had these types of contracts before, is exactly what they want going forward, just in the gateway and not uh, in the old format. So guidance documents for state claim submissions are located in the grantee document folder again in your specific contract. And ensure that you have required you have the required supporting documentation and that reimbursement for items line up with your contract requirements. So again, you can't be asking for uh, or putting in for a claim for more than a category allows for. Okay, and like I said, you should have these documents ready ahead of time. Well, what are the documents? So any supporting documentation, really anything you're uploading into the gateway in the payments module has to be a PDF. So you'll need to provide PDFs of supporting documentation for your claim submissions. Make sure that they are not password protected. So the system will have a problem reading those if they're password protected, and it'll make the claim submission uh, format that we'll see, or, or a PDF that we'll see, it'll make that fail. 
So you don't want to do that. You have to make sure that there's no passwords on it. PDFs must be readable, obviously. If it's a scan of something that's very small text and it's, you know, very hard to read because the quality of the text gets, um, gets poor every time you scan it, um, we may not accept that. So make sure that they're readable. And then, like I said, scans are allowed, but we really would prefer native PDF documents. You know, if you had a Word document, you don't want to print it out and then scan it. It's a lot easier just to do a file save as PDF. So be aware of that. Uh, it definitely makes it easier on the system and easier for your reviewers to read it if they were native documents that were saved on your computer to a PDF. And again, refer to the guidance documents in that grantee document folder on how to prepare those documents. All right, another important thing is logging in with the right role. So only a user in the role of grantee payment signatory can submit a claim for payment in the grants gateway. So that's a new role for most organizations. You may have never had one set up before. Um, so other roles can start the claim, grantee system admin, grantee contract signatory, and the grantee. They can all go to your contract, start a claim, but they can't certify that claim and they can't submit it to us. Um, now, if you don't have the appropriate role, you need to get one set up. So you might have a role already. You might have a grantee system admin role or a grantee contract signatory role. Again, you're going to have to have somebody in your organization with this appropriate role, grantee payment signatory, that can submit the claim. So someone's got to be set up with that. If you don't have it or the person that you want doesn't have it, talk to your grantee delegated admin. That's the person at your organization that we set up, and it could be two people or three people, those are people that we set up with the rights to add and edit to different users. So we leave it up to you to decide, or your organization to decide, who gets a role in the gateway, and you need to talk to that person to find out or to get them to set you up with an account. So if that person is you, the grantee delegated admin, or if it's somebody that you're talking to, you want to make sure that you do not change people's roles in the system. And it may look tempting because there's actually a drop-down for the grantee delegated admin they have a drop down to, sh to pick different roles. That actually messes things up. It really shouldn't allow that. Uh, it's something that we have to change in the future in the, in the grants gateway. But if someone was to change your role, it won't work. So in fact, we'll reject your claim. It'll allow you to submit the claim, but the signature won't be valid and we'll have to send it back to you. So this goes for all types of roles. Do not change your role. If you've already had an account created, ask for a new one to be created. And it's really, you know, a two-minute process or a 30-second process to have a new account created by your grantee delegated admin. All right, so I wanted to, um, you know, underline, bold, and point that out because we have had issues with that where people, you know, are not following kind of the first direction we tell them, which is create a new account for the grantee payment signatory. So please make sure that you are someone – if somebody already has the account, that it was created from new, not that it was a, an old account that was changed the role. And if you have somebody new, obviously make sure you get them set up with this correct uh, account, first of all. And then what happens after your claim is submitted? Now, obviously, I'm going to go through the steps of submitting it, but once you do that, what do you do? One thing we would like is for you to email the DOH, uh, your contract manager or program manager, to let them know you've submitted it. And you might as well submit the p voucher PDF. I'll show you where you can get that. Uh, it just it will make it a lot easier on them, but the system will not alert your contract manager or program manager that you've submitted a claim. And obviously, we don't want to sit on it. So to help us, um, you know, they'll be log logging in uh, all the time anyway. But to help us get started on it, it would be nice if you could send in the email. So we're going to ask for that, and I'll show you where to get that PDF. Um, but once you submit it, how do you know it's been submitted, and how do you know what the processes uh, are happening behind the scenes? So first of all, you will get a status change, or you'll see the status change of the payment to payment in review, where it used to be in payment and process. We'll see that. And when you created a payment, you would have had a task, and now that task will have gone away. Um, and you can then follow the, the progress. You can log in periodically and observe the current payment status just by searching at it or looking at the payment. You can look at the payment schedule report, which I'll run, which I'll show you that uh, it's very similar if you've ever run the contract schedule report or the application schedule report. It, it looks exactly the same, just obviously for payments. And then there's this one last screen called the payment calc encoding. 
And I actually can't show you that today. I'll have to think of a way of showing that because that goes after it's been approved. Uh, once it gets to that, you can actually see the status of your payment and your check number and other information like that. Okay, so I'm going to the Grants Gateway. You should all have experience logging into the Gateway. I'm hoping this is not your first time. If it is, you're going to grantsgateway.ny.gov. Uh, you'll notice I have a little different URL up here, but that's because I'm in a test system. So you go in and you're going to log in, again, with that role of the grantee payment signatory. So I set mine up as JPayment2, and I will log in. And I confirm that, yes, I am a grantee payment signatory. And you have a lot of the same rights that a uh, grantee contract signatory has. I can go and search the portal and search for applications and contracts and payments and so on. Um, so these, remember, if you're familiar with the gateway, up the top here is searching. So I can search for payments that I've started. We haven't started any yet, so I can't do it that way. I can't start my payment by searching. Um, and if I had tasks, I would have a task down here, which I don't just yet. So how do I start a payment? I go to the contract uh, and start it from there. So payments are done within the specific contract. You could certainly search for the application too, but in this case, we're gonna search for the contract. And if you're familiar with this, you might remember that it remembers the last thing you searched on. So I searched on CEN18, just because my organization has a bunch of different contracts. But you can leave it blank. You can search on all of your contracts if you wanted to. Or maybe you knew the contract number. You could type that number in here. But I'm leaving it for CEN18. I'm going to hit search. And it finds me all of my contracts that are with this application number, CEN18. And of course, I have just this one here. So it's a $50,000 contract, and it's in the status of contract executed. And that's important because you can't submit a payment or a claim for payment unless you're in contract executed status. And this is the name of my organization. So I'll click on my application number, which will actually bring me into the contract. Contract main page. So this should look familiar to you. If I go to my forms menu, you can see it's a, you know, I'm in a standard contract, so this is my contract forms menu. And I can go down to the bottom here and look at the grantee document folder. So we can see these are documents probably from the, um, uh, from the application. Um, maybe they're not. Tell me, DOH. Are these the documents you're referring to or not? But regardless, um, you go to the grantee document folder and oh, they're saying yes. So you go to the grantee document folder and you see these documents and you can get one or any of them that you want. Let's see right here the Grants Gateway Budget Data Entry Guidelines. I'll hit go and I'll click on view file. Oh, sorry, I'm in this testing system so I can't just click on view file. You can, so don't, uh, don't be alarmed at that. Just because I'm in the testing system, I have to do something slightly different. Okay, so I'll click it and click on open, and it's an Excel doc. And uh, this is the guidance for you to uh, fill out your budget. Okay, so the point of this webinar is not to go through these documents, but just to let you know that they are there. So again, let me go back to the gateway. You're in your contract, you go to the forms menu, and you go to the grantee document folder. You can click on any item that you want. You can use the drop down to navigate to a certain item, hit go, and then download it individually by clicking on this view file. And that'll give you the guidance that you need for what supporting documentation that we need, what can go in what category, and so on. All right, so I've read those guidelines. Let's say I have, I really haven't. Uh, and I know what I want to, to submit, so I'm ready to start a payment. And you can see, again, we're still in the contract. We're still in our contract here, and it's contract executed. Under progress reports and related documents, there's this initiate a payment. And that's obviously what you'll do to initiate a payment. So we click on it. Now, I want to say something about this. Uh, we've been noticing people keep kind of double clicking on it, or maybe triple or quadruple clicking, because you can see it's spinning right here. If you can see up in the top where I'm circling, um, it's spinning, kind of starting this payment. Um, let it do it. Let it start and finish and it'll refresh your page because if you keep clicking, you'll have 
claim number one, claim number two, claim number three, and so on, you'll have a whole bunch of blank claims created. Um, so we're working on changing that, maybe a, uh, a button that tells you, you know, a pop-up that tells you to wait. But for now, just realize you should be waiting until this circle refreshes like it just did. All right, so now I am in payment number or payment document number, uh, INV DOH01, my contract number, uh, this whole thing is a contract number with 001 on the end and INV appended to the beginning or prepended to the beginning. So invoice, contract number, and invoice number 001. For parent, which is my application number, STEN18, number 00008. Okay, so I've started a claim for payment. So the payment main page is just an overview, just like if you've ever had an application or a contract, there's the application main page and the contract main page. Obviously, I haven't done anything yet, so I haven't put in for, um, I don't have any dollar amounts showing here. So I'm going to do it for period one here, which is 7 one 2018 to 3 31 2019 um, And what I'm going to do is put in for the first month. And we'll go to the forms menu, and you can see payments have their own little forms menu. So I'm not in the contract now, I'm in the payment within the contract. So I can click on forms menu or hover it, however you choose. And the first thing you do is go to payment properties. You have to tell the system what type of claim am I going to be submitting. Am I going to be submitting an advance or a claim? And obviously this is going to be a claim. So we're going to do claim and I'll do 7-1-2018 27 30 30 I forget now. Yeah, 31. Uh, 2018. How do you want to be paid? Uh, I believe it defaults to the main ePay, which is the um, electronic payment, ACH. You can change, though, if you want. You can change it to a check. Uh, but it'll remember, you should still double check that. It'll show in the address. Again, if, you're, if it's an ePay, you're not, your address is not being uh, utilized anyway, but it'll show on the payment. This payment IRS code you can ignore. If there's something in here that really makes sense to you, you can choose it, but you can see it's a not a required field, so you can ignore it. All right, so that's all I have to do. I'm telling the system, well, there's one other thing. I'm telling the system what type of claim it is. And the other thing, though, is it a final payment, yes or no? And obviously this is not my final payment. It wouldn't mess anything up if you picked yes. It's just a flag, but still, we want to be accurate, so we're going to pick no. This is not our final payment and we'll hit save. So in doing so, it's going to tell the system, all right, we wanted a claim type, and we now have a new forms menu related to the type of claim that we picked. So let's go to that forms menu. You can hover over it because uh, you need to click on it to see the whole menu. So I clicked on the words forms menu, I'm back in the forms menu, and these are all the forms related to a claim. So there's two things you have to fill out, your claim detail form and your uploads. And it doesn't matter which way you go first. If you want to make your uploads first and then fill out the form or the other way, it doesn't really matter to us. I'm going to do it, uh, I'm going to start here, go here, and then go back to the claim detail form just to show you. Okay, so here is the unitemized expenditure claim form, and it's showing me all the categories where I have an approved budget for grant funds. In my case, it's only $50,000 in operating expenses. So I can't put in for anything in salary. If I try to, and I hit save, it'll give me an error saying there's not enough allowed, that's not allowed in this category, you have to do a budget modification if you want that. So obviously I'm not doing that. But I can go down here to operating expenses, and let's say I have, I don't know, $18,000 in operating expenses. Now, there are no match requirements for these contracts, so you can see they're grayed out here, on the bottom here. They're grayed out here, so there's no reason for you to fill out any match, but it will show anyway. And if you take a look at the columns, we're seeing what's approved in your budget, how much you've spent already, which of course is zero right now, how much you're about to claim, uh, the current expenditures or current cumulative expenditure, expenditures, which we haven't done anything yet, we haven't saved yet, and then the state agency will audit it as well. If there's some reason why they need to reduce uh, your claim, they can do that. Let's say you put in a claim for three items and it totals $18,000, but you only had supporting documentation for two of them. They might knock that third one off, tell you to fix it, do it another, do it another time, and then only approve the first two. 
All right, but I'm going to put in for $18,000. Now, we scroll down, there's the match funds that I talked about, and then there's this certification. So you can put in any comments that you want. Not required, obviously. And you're going to want to certify. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because I want to show you the error that you'll get if you don't. And, you know, I haven't done any uploading yet, so, you know, I really can't certify it technically. So I'll hit save. And I did get an error that the certification accept checkbox is required, but that's okay. I'll get to that later. Now what I need to do, though, is I want to go back to my forms menu and upload my, um, my supporting documentation that supports that $18,000. So the type is always supporting documentation. The category, now I can put it in under, um, what do we have, operating expenses, or maybe miscellaneous if it was that, but I'm going to put in operating expenses. So your contract number, and I don't remember what mine is, I'll just do 33999. Obviously it's right up here, isn't it? Yeah, 33696. July 2018. Now I need my supporting documentation. So they're telling us that we want one file for all. And if I click on Browse, I'm going to go find my supporting documentation. Now I just have a, a random PDF that I'm going to use. So I called it supporting documentation. You should probably say supporting documentation or whatever for the month and the contract number. And I'll hit save. Okay, it's easy as that. And it now gives me another line because I might have something else. And if you wanted to, um, I can, you know, maybe have something else. The only reason I'm doing this is to show you what it looks like when we're creating the PDF. So I'm going to attach it and hit save. And now I have two items here. So one thing I think it's important to do is click on view file and make sure what you've just uploaded is really what you intended. Make sure that you didn't scan something with the pages backwards and you've got blank pages. You know, make sure that things are readable and so on. So I'll click on view file and I'll open it. Now in my case, you can see all it is is this. Here's my supporting documentation. Obviously you'd have a real document here though. So I think it's a good idea just to double check it by clicking on view file. And really that's it. Now there's two other things you can do before you submit it. I can go in here and there's a notes section. So notes allows me to put in comments for the program to read. So please don't do this if you don't need to. But if you do want to communicate or keep a record of communication between you and the program, you can. So if I hit save, it stamps it with the date and time and my name and the role I was in uh, and what status it was in when I left this comment. So DOH can come back and reply to it or at least read it and know what's going on there uh, or address what your question was. So it's a good way of keeping communication between you uh, as a record in the contract or in the payment itself. Okay, so I'll go back to the forms menu that was under notes. And the last thing is this payment voucher preview. Now remember I have this error because I didn't certify it. We'll ignore that for now. But the payment voucher preview is just like if you have a contract or, PD or application, you can view the PDF. So sometimes it might take a while to create because it's doing it kind of on the fly with all the documents you've just provided. But I just provided two very small documents, so it should be pretty quick. And there it is, and I'll click on open. Okay, so this is a five pager here. All right, so cover page. My organization name, the name of my, uh, the number of the application, the Senate initiative, the name of the program, my invoice number, so remember this was number 0001, or 001. It's a claim, it's not a claim for an advance. Remember I did it for 712, here it is, 71 to 731, and it's for $18,000. Um, obviously it hasn't gone to get reviewed yet, so they haven't audited it yet. So this is, looks exactly like what you saw in the forms menu because that's what it is, the unitemized expenditure claim detail form. There's our $50,000 that was approved for our budget, but we put in for a claim for $18,000.
We had no match. We had some comments, and I forgot to accept it. That's okay. And then the kind of a table of contents, these are the attachments that appear in this. So in this case, remember, I had two, um, but I'm being told by health that you probably only have one. But here it is, my contract number and the, uh, the period or the, the date range. And I did it on 822 by the person named Jeff Payment. And those attachments will follow. So there's my first one, and there's my second one. So you can see it's a nice, easy document for the program to read. Now, obviously, they've got one sentence to read here on this page. Well, they'll have, I imagine, multiple pages and information from yours, uh, but it is a nice, easy uh, one document for your entire invoice. All right, so I know I'm not done, but I'm gonna try to submit it without, uh, without certifying it. If I went to status change, payment submitted, it gives me this error. Wait a minute, you forgot to accept that payee certification box. So let's go back to that page and let's accept it right down here at the bottom. Now, if you are a grantee contract signatory or a grantee, you can't do this. And if you change your role, you can't do this. So you have to have a native grantee contract uh, or grantee payment signatory role to do it. So I'll click on it, hit save. And it's still refreshing here. And what's going to happen if we scroll down to the bottom, it shows my name, my title, and the date that I did it. And what I attested to is that I certify that the above bill is just, true, and correct that no part thereof has been paid except as stated, and that the balance is actually due and owing, and that taxes from which the state is exempt are excluded. Okay, pretty simple. So now I can go ahead and submit my claim. So remember, we're currently in the status of payment in process, and if I click on status changes and submit it, there's a uh, affirmation that I have to read, basically the same thing we just read, and I click on I agree and my claim has been submitted. How do I know that? If I click on details, I have a change in the status, payment and review. And if we go back to the home page, which we're on right now, the payment main page, remember I talked before in the PowerPoint about the payment schedule report. You can always come back here and click on it. And you can see the different statuses it goes through. I started it in payment process. It's now been sent to payment and review. We have five days scheduled for it. It's already taken zero because obviously we just did it a minute ago. And it just goes through these different statuses until we get paid. So you can take a look at that as it goes through as well. So if we go to contracts, we can search for it there. But you can also search under payments. So if you go to payments, you can go and search again for name or ID. Um, I have only two payments in the entire system. So I can click on search on blank and find those two. The one is in review and the one I just started, which isn't really going to be submitted. All right, so it is pretty simple. You go in, you find the contract, you initiate the payment, you fill out the, essentially those two pages. You should look at your preview just to make sure that everything looks good and then you submit it. Um, so really, it's a pretty quick process. <clears throat> All the behind the scenes things uh, will take you a while, you know, to get your documents together, but that's not really any different than what you would have, would have had done before. One important point here, and probably the last point I wanna make is, um, you use the gateway for payments only for these contracts. If you have other contracts with the gateway, unless you were specifically told that they are set up to use payments in the gateway, they aren't. You have to use those old contracts or other contracts in the original way you were doing payments. 